is Michael Weston. I used to be a spy until... We got a burn notice on you. You're blacklisted. When you're burned, you've got nothing. No cash, no credit, no job history. You're stuck in whatever city they decide to dump you in. Miami. You do whatever work comes your way. You rely on anyone who's still talking to you. A trigger-happy ex-girlfriend. You shoot them. An old friend who used to inform on you to the FBI. You know, spies. Bunch of bitchy little girls. Family, too. Hey, is that your mom again? If you're desperate. Someone needs your help, Michael. Bottom line, as long as you're burned, you're not going anywhere. Forging an intelligence file is always tricky. Spies are trained to catch even tiny inconsistencies, from outdated typeface to the wrong kind of thermochromatic ink. Even the folder needs to be picture perfect, because the fact is, spies do judge books by their covers. So here's the story. This report came from a Navy buddy who's serving in Japan where they still use the old school Pentagon folders. And I happen to have one. So thank God for government inertia, huh? But Jesse's been working on this investigation for years. Well, everything that he was looking into and all the stuff that we found, well, this little baby connects all the dots. It's your masterwork, Sam. I owe you a mojito. Damn straight. But before we start patting ourselves on the back, can we talk about what we're doing to Jesse? See, Jesse's seen a lot of bad things happen to a lot of good people. He just wants a name, and we're just going to give him that name. John Barrett. God, why didn't I put this together? John Barrett. It's great cover running a telecom conglomerate gets Barrett in every corner of the globe. Massive resources, highest level government access. It's a nice perch for a guy looking to start a few little wars and make a buck off it. This is... I mean, I was looking at private military companies, arms dealers, retired spooks. I should have been watching the guy who was laying the phone lines. Where do I send my thank you note? Oh, a buddy of mine stationed in Japan. He uh, didn't even know what he had there. All right, man. Drake Tech's base in New York, right? Let's head up there. Let Barrett know his numbers up. Why go to where he's strongest? We have what he wants. Better to make him come to us. What, you want to call him up, let him know we got a Bible he's been looking for? That's exactly what I was thinking. What? I'm having friends over to play cards. It's my turn to host. Oh, that must be Susie. Uh, well, I guess it's time to go someplace where you won't be interrupted by Canasta. Three years. It's over a thousand days, man. Here it is. Are you sure about this? You sure you want to play it straight? There's no point lying to a man with Barrett's resources. We're just two burned spies selling a book code. You ready? Yes, sir. Hello? Mr. Barrett, Michael Weston. Sorry to bother you on your private line, but I have this odd-looking Bible. I've been flipping through it, and it appears to be a book code. Is that at all interesting to you? Can you please excuse me? My wife doesn't even have this number. How'd you get it? You want to talk about your wife not having your unlisted number? Or the book code you've been robbing banks and killing people to find? Who is this? I used to work for the government. So did my partner, Jesse Porter. Now we're working freelance. Thought you might be hiring. Just what is it you boys think I do? Well, don't waste our time, Mr. Barry. You're a merchant of death. And business is booming. You have the wrong number, son. And you have the wrong man. I run a telecom company. Well, the Bible's here in Miami. Whenever you're ready to talk, let us know.
figured out better. Oh, it went as well as it needed to. Right, Barrett wants the Bible. If you can't deal for it, he'll try to steal it. A man like that, he's already tracking us down. Yeah. So you and Jesse are poking Barrett with a stick. Why does the phrase sitting ducks come to mind? Jesse and I are pretty well-armed ducks. I hope so. Hello, Fiona. Well, hello. Hi, Mom. You know, I ordered you a nice tea, but if you I scored 1,420 points at Canasta yesterday, Michael. That's wonderful. It's horrible. I was distracted. I was nervous. I've been a wreck. What's wrong, Madeline? Sit down. I'm not staying for lunch. I only asked you all to meet me here because it's too risky to talk to my son in my own home. This is about Jesse. Made me sick. Watching you feed him that line of BS in my house yesterday. I don't want to keep him in the dark, but it's for his own good. Oh, and you're the one who gets to determine that? This will all be over soon, trust me. Well, it better be. Mom. I want to thank you again for suggesting Jesse live with her. Yeah, it may not have been one of my better ideas. Well, if lunch is off, then I should go talk to my new client. You're taking on a client in the middle of all this? Well, just a friend of a friend from yoga. The woman was seduced by a scam artist. He took her life savings. Don't worry, I'm not asking you for help. You guys a sleazy womanizer. Clearly a job for Sam X. After my husband died, I didn't think I'd ever date again. But then Charles came along. I thought, well, he's no Josh, but he likes some of my low-fat recipes. I should have known. You can't beat yourself up. The bastard told you what you wanted to hear. He was good. Those eyes, British accent, all those lies. Yep, he sounds slick. So how did he get your money? Well, I trusted him. Things were getting serious, I thought, and he offered to help me invest. And then he used your account info to help himself to your savings. We're not going to let him get away with this. I even hired a couple of private investigators. One of them actually quit after he met Charles. So he seemed like a nice guy. Now I'm selling off my life piece by piece. Well, that bastard is partying on South Beach with my savings. Well, you know, it's hard to party with broken kneecaps. Actually, I think we should fight fire with fire. Charles isn't the only charmer in Miami. I still think we should go after Baird directly in New York, man. Yeah, let's call that Plan Z. Trust me. Barrett wants the Bible. He's going to send someone after it. I don't mind being the bait as long as the trap is good enough. An effective booby trap not only needs to look like a good hiding spot, it also needs to leave your enemy incapacitated. A well-placed 50-gallon oil drum should pique your target's curiosity. And a portable defibrillator packs enough punch to make their heart skip a beat without stopping it entirely. Wire the defibrillator to a convincing decoy, and whoever comes looking will be in for a shock. Connect the camera wirelessly through an internet phone provider, and you'll be able to keep an eye on your trap from anywhere in the world without having to pay long distance. How's the Skype working? All right, looks good. Are you sure Barrett's up on that cell? This burner we called him with is made by a company he owns. Any idiot would know to tap and trace the phone, and Barrett's not an idiot. What now? We wait. While Barrett comes looking for this. Why do I get the feeling Sam's having more fun than we are? OK, 
Okay, Fee. You got eyes on him? Yep. Just like Emily said, there's Charles blowing her life saving. Yeah, except I don't think he spent a dime. I think he's got a new fish on the line. Well, he is the one man from England with decent teeth. So our con man's pretty clean since showing up stateside. Got an allegation of fraud up in Boca, but nothing really stuck except for a couple of DUIs. I couldn't find any bank accounts either. And yet he has an Interpol file. Yeah, it turns out he's not just a fraud, he's a suspected killer. A couple of women he built in England went missing when they complained. So he doesn't just steal from defenseless women, he murders them. That son of a bitch. Not this time. We're gonna introduce him to a new kind of trouble. I don't know. This fellow's gonna be a challenge. I think it's time for some Chuck Finley action. His name is Charles. You need a new cover, Andy. Sorry, Fee, I don't think so. Chuck Finley is forever. Excuse me, I don't mean to interrupt, but her feet are killing her. Any way we can just sit down with you for just a couple secs? Actually, this is a private area. So... Oh, Charles, don't be silly. Those heels are hot, but they look positively evil. Sit down. Thanks. I'm Chuck. This is Alexis. Lindsay and Charles. Cheers. <laughs> wow. Following your block. Good stuff. Charles and I are splurging. Oh, us too. South Beach is so much fun. I just flew in from San Francisco. I was chartering a yacht when I met Chuck. And he is showing me around. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that nice? Hey, tell you what. Next bottle's on me. <laughs> so I said, not if that's your idea of a haircut. <laughs> You get it? <laughs> oh. <sighs> I have to pat on my nose. Will you come with me? <laughs> Don't get lost. <laughs> so, Chuck, what is it that you do? Investments, just like you. You never know who's going to pay off. I'm afraid I don't follow. Normally I work Boca, but I have heard some legendary stories about you, my friend. Hey, relax. I'm not here to horn in on any of your action. You can have any woman in this club. I just need some help with Alexis. She's rich, divorced. Just what are you proposing? Well, she's a couple of nights of passion away from paying out big time, but I got the IRS breathing down my neck. I can't move a dime. I was hoping maybe you would let me run her fortune through your accounts. <laughs> you want to use my accounts? Quite a set of bollocks on you. Cut you in 20% for an hour's work. I don't do business like that. I'm a lone wolf, mate. Isn't Charles sweet? Huh? Almost too good to be true. How long have you been dating? Just a few weeks. I am so lucky to have found him. Maybe he found you. Must have been fate. I was so devastated after my sister passed. And he works with this cancer research charity. This is the last time you show your face in this club. This is my turf. Okay, you drive a hard bargain. 30%. Hey, 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 hey. So sorry, love. I just got a business call from London. We really should run. Really? I was hoping... We really should go. Lovely meeting. That son of a bitch is preying on another grieving woman. Please tell me you got his account information. No, the limey is totally charm-proof. Well, let's see if he's bulletproof. Fee, Look, this... you had your chance. I'm gonna beat Emily's money out of him. 
Spies spend plenty of time with sociopaths and criminals. But sometimes it's even more dangerous to hang out with their victims. Letting your emotions get the best of you can threaten the entire operation. I'm not going after you. Get your hands off me! Sticking a gun to his head is not going to help. He is prepared for that, believe me. We will get her money back. I promise me. If we don't, I will shoot him. And then I'll shoot you. Hey, where's Sam? Oh, Sam and I are, uh, we're taking a break from each other. This is Michael. It's good to meet you. Nice boat. Thanks. My husband and I built her together, actually. That's why she's named Back Pain. <laughs> Don't do this, Emily. We're gonna get your money back. Things went well with Charles? Uh, not exactly. Charles is extremely careful, but we might have a new angle. You know how you're not supposed to mix prescription medication with alcohol? Charles is gonna make that mistake with Lorazepam. Wait a second, you're drugging him? Well, there's, there's gotta be another way you can get him to tell you the truth. Well, we're not drugging him to make him talk. We're drugging him so that he blacks out. And when Charles wakes up, Sam will convince him he went on a crazy spending spree, will want to check his balance. And we'll be watching when he does. That plan sounds insane. Well, insane is one of our specialties. Charles. Could I have made it more clear that this was my turf? No, 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 you were very clear. Look, I'm about to wrap things up with Alexis and Blowtown, but before I do, I just wanted to drop off a token of respect. Just consider this the, the king's hunting tax, if you will. King's hunting tax. <laughs> Look, I wandered onto your turf and I just wanted to say I'm sorry, so no hard feelings? Well, as you're leaving town? Oh, that I am. I hope you like that timepiece, because I had to earn it. Alexis is a real ball buster. You know, I'm all set to bleed or dry by the end of the week, but every moment until then is like, pew! <laughs> well, there's nothing more pathetic than a bitch who can't move on. Amen to that, brother. <laughs> I've a uh, mate across the pond who disposes of the clingy ones once he's wrung them out. A mate? Right. <laughs> Let me buy a drink. <laughs> to create a blank spot in someone's memory, you need to be equal parts drinking buddy and amateur chemist. First, you need the target to party enough to make your story believable the next day. At the same time, you need to gauge their tolerance so you can combine just the right amount of alcohol with just the right amount of pharmaceutical assistance. Come on, bottoms up. A night to remember. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Yep, he's still out. Thank you. I'll do that one more time and I might forgive you for the other night. <laughs> Happy now? Yeah. Anything useful on his phone? No, but now it has a bug. I sent that Lindsay woman a little message. Uh-oh, did Charles drunk text her? May have accidentally revealed his plans to rip her off. She sent him a text back saying she never wants to see him again. Oh well. Okay, let's get down to business. When Charles wakes up, he will have had one hell of a night. Every step of our investigation has been like pulling teeth. Stalled out for weeks and then boom, Sam's buddy just happens to be sitting on the magic bullet. We had the problem surrounded. There aren't two other people on the planet who'd know that that file connects to Barrett. Yeah, I'm just asking how reliable is Sam's friend, you know? 
Maybe we should test him, slip him a lead from Sifa. See if Jesse, we talked to Barrett. He's the guy who wants the Bible. Do we really need more confirmation than that? I mean, hold on. We have a guest. Oh, hello. That's it, buddy. You're getting warmer. Maybe the Bible's in that oil drum. Warmer? Yeah, even warmer. You're getting hot. Burnt. Bam. Hands, hands. No, no, no. Hands up. Hands up. Thank you. That was close, buddy. Almost stole our phone book. You have no idea who you're messing with. Well, whose fault is that? You haven't told us your name yet. And until we get a chance to chat with your bosses, you're a guest of the abandoned boathouse. His phone's clean. <sighs> I guess we get to spend more time in the sweat box guarding him till his superiors call to check in. Actually, I'm supposed to go help Fee and Sam with a gig. Unless you want to go. I did take the last shift. I'll pick up more bucks spray. Okay, it's been 12 hours. Time to wake up Sleeping Beauty. Mike there yet? He's running late. It's a pity we have to wake up Charles at all. Uh, dead guys are much less likely to visit a bank, V. Hello. We survived the mosquitoes. Barely. All right, Sam, get him moving. Shake it off. Wild night, huh, Chaz? Have a cup of joe. What are you doing in my house? Good morning to you, too. Whatever happened to friends till death? What the hell? Last I remember, you were leaving Miami. Someone needs practice drinking. I mean, how many did you even have last night? Look, if you don't remember the French DJ, tell me you at least remember the Brazilian chicks from the after party? Off the party? Oh, come on. Or how about when we were hauling ass in your new car and you jumped the curb? What new car? Where the hell did this come from? Uh, you bought it, buddy. You backed into it on Ocean Drive. The guy jumps out screaming, You dented my car! And you said, No, mate. I dented my car. And you bought it off him on the spot. It was epic. I bought this Bentley last night. Yeah. You ran off yelling about some account. Then you came back with a bag of cash. I gotta tell you, you know how to party. Where's my Lexus? Where's my wallet? Maybe your wallet's in your Lexus. What the bloody hell is going on here? Anyone ever tell you you're a lot more fun when you're drunk? Hey, hair of the dog is what you need. Shut up, piss off, get out, okay? I'll have some things to get sorted. Uh, does this mean we're not gonna pick up those new suits you ordered for us? What? All right. Game time. and Peterson said into a law firm? We need to talk, Martin. I don't see the point of it. Money man, Charles, I'm in the middle of something. What's going on? Don't I on. pay you to some judgment? Sounds like the juicy part. You gotta get closer.
Nobody here gave you a damn thing. Really? Where do you think I get the money to pay for that, you half-wit? Let the grown-ups talk. Get old of yourself. This is why you don't handle the accounts. You start drinking, you lose your head. Don't worry. Your money's safe. Tony, head out to the front lot and check out that blue car. Is there any chance we were followed here? We gotta go. When your surveillance is about to be blown, you have two choices. You can run, or you can stay put and make it look like you have a reason to be there. somewhere else. A guy can't make out with his girlfriend? Okay, that was... Uh... Purely tactical? Yes. Yes, it was. We should go. Yes. Mm. So... Our friend Barry says Charles has a kind of underworld money manager handling his cash. He's got hundreds of offshore accounts. Even if we knew which one had your money, only Charles and this Smartin character can make withdrawals. That's the bad news. Well, the bad news is it looks like I'm moving back in with my mother. Well, we have an angle. Charles is very, very worried about guarding his money. And with a little pushing, we can turn his concern for his financial security into full-blown paranoia. He gets paranoid enough? He's going to start looking for help. Right, and that's when we bring our buddy Mike to help. What Mike's going to do is he's going to make it clear that the only way he can help is if Charles shows him exactly where he keeps the money. Do you guys have, like, a manual where you get this stuff or something? No. Mostly we just make it up as we go. There you are. What the hell did you get me into? What are you going on about? They are following me. Dreadfully sorry, my loves. Right back. Just what are you talking about? Have you gone mad? I'm telling you, they are after me. Ever since you and I hung out the other night, there has been a little blue Hyundai all over my ass. One of my men thought a blue car was following me. Well, there you go. But it turned out to be nothing. Just a couple snogging in the alley. Huh? You know, making out. Really? Point is... They weren't following me. Of course they were making out. That was just their cover. That's the oldest trick of the book. I'm telling you, they're after both of us. No, I have been careful. There is nothing to worry about. You've got to take this seriously, Chaz. This could be a jealous husband. No, I am going to relax and work on my tan. Good luck, mate. Okay, yeah, I planted the seed. How's it coming with our not-so-sneaky bug? Don't rush me, Sam. Jesse just got here with Madeline's old stereo. Yeah, uh, hey, Fee, speaking of Jesse, when you were following Charles... I'll call you when we're done, Sam. All right, so... Let's give Charles something to worry about. There's an art to building a listening device that's meant to be discovered. It's not enough for it to look like a bug, it needs to have a fatal flaw to make sure someone finds it. Like a high frequency transmitter that causes ear splitting feedback when placed near other electronics. We should get going. This bug isn't gonna plant itself. All right, yeah, I'm gonna head back to the bug house. But Michael Davis hit our captive. So I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. Yep. Yeah. How'd the bug building go with Faye? Charles can't find that thing. He's more of a dumbass than we thought. Here we go. Hello? Where have you been? You were supposed to check in. 
This is Michael Weston and Jesse Porter. We're your boss's new business associates. Where's Colonel Russell? You guys have a colonel running your errands? What do you Just listen to me. We're sending Colonel Russell back to you with some photocopy pages from the Bible. The sneak preview should make it very clear. We have the rest. You send any more of your little thieves for it, we're gonna burn it. You tell Mr. Barrett to come on down to Miami like we asked him to. Do I need to repeat myself? No. Good. Talk to you soon. Active duty, huh? I'm sure Uncle Sam would be happy to hear that you're taking side gigs to make a quick buck. Trying to blackmail me. Of course not. But you need to remember which boss you're taking these to. These pages go right to the big guy in New York. He's expecting you soon. You know, you're kicking a hornet's nest, right? Ooh. Suddenly he's Mr. Talkative. Drive safe. I say done. I say we should call up Sam, see if he wants to go get a drink, but uh, he's probably lost his taste for alcohol. Chaz, I was just about to call you. You were right, mate. They're after me too. I just found a bug in my new car. You know what? That's nothing. There's a hundred K missing from my offshore account. And you know who knew I had money in Aruba? Hmm? Nobody. I told my money manager, but he thought I was talking rubbish. What the hell would a money manager know about this, huh? This is hardcore. No, 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 no. I'm gonna call a guy who knows how to handle this kind of crap. To go after your money? No, to go after the people who were hunting us. Look, meet me at the Sagamore and bring that little bug thing that you found, okay? Brilliant. This is your guy who handles stuff. You tell me he was a dirty cop. Well, he's just sort of, kind of cop. It's all right. I don't mind the word dirty. Okay, so look. This is my account in Aruba. You see those transaction codes? The bastards bled me dry. And you said they were following you. Yeah, and a blue Hyundai. They bugged my new car. Probably come after your money next. Give me your bank info and I'll cut them off at the pass. No, I have people watching my accounts. What I need you to do. Oh, are you gonna tell me what to do, your majesty? Oh, you're the expert on how to catch bad guys. Well, you don't need me then. No offense, mate. I just don't ever give out my bank Yeah, money. fine. Beach is that way. Go stick your head in the sand. You told me he was on board. Hey, it's not my problem if you two want to get financially disemboweled. But I came all the way down okay, here. Okay, okay. I'll get the info for you. But you better catch these guys. I want them to suffer. Martin. Charles. Listen, I'm hiring somebody to find out who's been spying it. Bitch. Okay. Right. Sounds good. Well, that's all. Seems like my man is sorted things. Sorted how? Chuck, have a moment. <clears throat> my money man has found out who's been after us. It's this bitch I fleeced about a month ago. Turns out she's been hiring PIs. Must have seen us together. Okay, well, that's fine. We'll have Brooks over there just deal with her and no, then he... No. I've been told not to worry about her. I've got a ticket to Rio. I'm getting out of town. Wait a second. You dragged me into this and now you're just gonna skip town? No, no. I feel dreadful about it, mate. I'll tell you what. I've got a few promising prospects I can throw you away. Make your money back in no time. Stop by first thing. He's going to Rio. Mike, this is not good. Good luck then. That was Fee. Emily just called her. A couple of guys just showed up outside our house with guns. She's hiding in the closet. Oh,
Whenever possible, it's best to avoid charging into a building filled with angry men with guns. If going in is your only option, you choose the best place to stage an ambush, lock and load, and get your enemies to come to you. Somebody see you. Police breaching techniques generally involve removing a door by its hinges or knocking it open with a battering ram. Military breaching techniques are more aggressive. They don't just try to get by the door, they use it as a weapon. Beam backgrounds hurt like a bitch, am I right? <laughs> Emily! It's clear. <sighs> How much is my life worth? How much did Charles pay you? He didn't send them. His money guy's in cleanup mode. Charles is skipping town. He's heading to Rio. Are you kidding me? That bastard's going to Rio? Don't worry. He's not going to make it. Sam's intercepting him before he catches his flight. He's going to have another wild night before heading out of town. When he wakes up, he's going to have a serious mess to cover up. About that. I know you said you didn't want to part with your boat. Whatever it takes to stop Charles, I'll do it. As promised, if you can't make your hundred grand back fleecing those marks, it's your own bloody fault, mate. Happy hunting. To the hunt. Actually, I'm swearing off alcohol for a bit. Chairs, I don't even know what those words mean. Buddy. <laughs> Cheers. Mmm. One on top. Widow in Coral Gables. She should be worth two and a half. She's won a lawsuit against some chemical company that killed her kid. <laughs> Charles, you're a real peach. Killed you to just snap her neck? What? What are you talking oh, about? No, don't tell me you've had another blackout. Did I? I, I killed. I killed Emily. No, you called me screaming to save your ass because you got a parking ticket. Of course you killed Emily. You gave her a freaking Viking funeral. Now come on, look. We gotta go. My buddy's waiting. Let's go. Yo, buddy. You mean the turkey cop? Don't you remember anything? Yes, yes. The guy that you begged me to bring in. Okay, yeah, come on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, can you fix this? Yeah, it ain't gonna be easy and it ain't gonna be cheap. <sighs> I don't care. If you clean this up, I'll pay you whatever he wants. A million dollars. That's my Sunday special. Cops are picking apart the crime scene. DNA's on its way to the lab. You're covered in blood. You wanna guess how many palms I got of grease? I can get you off a million. Half a million? Are you negotiating with me? Are you negotiating with me? A million is too much. I'd rather run for it. Great idea. Fugitives escape all the time. Lady killer here is going to prison. I distance myself. Wait! Whoa, wait! 
Look, I'm not cut out for prison. You have to make this go away. I'll get the million. You get a million dollars. I will backdate a ticket to Tahiti like this chick Emily's skipping town. It'll look like she blew up her boat for some fraud insurance claim. Good, good, brilliant. I'll work. Martin, it's Charles. Now shut up and listen. I'm training my accounts. I need every cent of it, including your share. Don't you play the crazy card with me, you bloody tosser. If I don't have it all, within the hour, I'm going to the police and I'm going to tell them your nasty little secrets. One hour, Martin! All good? Money, man. I owe him a percentage, but I know where his bodies are buried. He knows what happens if he doesn't come through. You know, there's a flight to Rio in three hours. Why don't I get us a limo? We can both go cool up. <laughs> Rio, of course. <laughs> Thirty percent of it is my money, Charles. Nobody blackmails me and gets away with it. That's tough talk for a glorified accountant, Martin. You're lucky I don't kill you right here just for that weasel look on your face. See you when I see you. <laughs> One million dollars. Now, make this all go away. By the time I'm done, it'll be like this never happened. Who says you can't get away with murder? Ah, oh, feels liberating. <laughs> hey, you know, speaking of that, there's a few things I wanted to mention to you. First of all, I figured out why you're blacking out. Oh, thank you, detective. I know I've been drinking too much. Well, it's that, yeah. And I've been drugging him. <laughs> but there's more good news. You're not a murderer. What? What the hell are you saying? Ah, but there's more bad news. See, since you ripped off your money man, he wants you dead. And that's a big problem because we told his guys where they could find you. They're going to Rio. <laughs> Actually, no. There's one final piece I gotta tell you. Also bad news. We're not going to Rio. What the hell are you doing? Chuck! This is your stuff. Chuck, what is this? You can't be serious. This is mental. You know, there's nothing more pathetic than a bitch who can't move on. A raging British jackass once told me that. I should just drop this off at the bank. Show them a police report. They'll probably chalk it up to a transfer mistake. The rest of the cash we got from Charles is going back to his victims. A buddy of mine on the force is putting together a list. What happened to Charles? Oh, uh, he's currently on the run from his former money manager. You guys are amazing. Sorry about having to sacrifice your boat. You know, I think Josh would have appreciated the final point. Mom, have you seen Jesse? Are you going somewhere? Tampa. I've been meaning to visit my friend Gwen. So that's what I'm going to do. Were you planning on saying goodbye? Well, all right, tell Gwen I said hi. I don't even 
particularly like Gwen, Michael. But I can't keep walking past Jesse in my house with all this pressure. And I can't watch you keep telling lie after lie. You know, you say that like you think I enjoy it. Don't bother calling me to come back until it's over. I'm sorry. I have to take this. Mr. Barrett, at long last. I got your little message. You've never heard of email? I guess I'm just old-fashioned. I don't believe in making a deal without a handshake. If you want the Bible, you have to get on a plane. I just got off one, son. Thought I should meet you face to face. I'll be in touch. So, Barrett's in town. The Prince of Darkness right here in Miami. I think we've used that name before. Yeah, I'll try and think of something better. In the meantime, here's the FAA manifest for Drake Tech's private jet. Fifteen guys on board. I guess he brought an army. Doubt that will stop him from hiring some locals. Yeah, I already made a few calls for some private security firms. I'm trying to figure out where he's staying, too. Well, that's a start. He had to have visited Miami before. We should find out where his old haunts are. Yep, lots of work ahead. Hey, Jesse coming? Consuela, five beers, please. What? Gotta hydrate. Michael, you need to talk. Hey, Fee. What's going on, Jesse? You know, something's, uh, something's bothering me for the last few days. I was having a hard time putting my finger on it. Then I talked to my old handler, Marv. You remember him, right? There's no security footage from the military annex on the day that I was burned. It's all been wiped. But, uh... There's another facility across the street. Mark found that footage hadn't been erased. So it turns out that at the exact same moment that I was accused of stealing government files, someone else was rushing away from the annex. But that doesn't mean... Oh, no! No! You do not get to lie to me anymore! Michael burned me. And you all helped cover it up. It wasn't meant to happen. We've been trying to take Barrett out so you can get back in. Everything that's happened since the day that I met you people has been a lie. No, it's not true. And Michael, he's a spy. You know, I, I should expect that from him, but you... I thought I meant something to you. You do? You can stop. You can stop right there. Goodbye, Fiona. No, Jess. Please. Jess, he found out about everything. He had a gun. Wait, wait, wait. Are you okay? We ruined his life, Michael. Where is he? I don't know. 
But I think he's gonna make us pay. 